All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai, the house of David. Once again, it's another video coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshem, Yahweh Shai, Barshem, Rekar, Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in, which is indeed a blessing that we know this knowledge, this truth, because, uh, that's going to be our guiding light when all hell breaks loose. And that's pursuant to um, Isaiah 33 and 6, which says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. The wisdom and knowledge of these scriptures. The wisdom and knowledge of this truth. All right, so that being said, this video was inspired by um, a question that you see here on screen. It was... a uh, put on this video here uh, GMS declaring the end versus Paul Kersey number four or four for GMS for GMS um, so yeah so uh, senior Hebrew says Shalom Elder Apostle Gabor I was wondering about the burnt offerings and sacrifices I heard y'all mention it was done away with. It was done away, but Yahweh I said, one jot or one tittle of the law won't be done away till the kingdom. So I was wondering if you could expound on it for me. Yeah, no problem. Um, and we teach this that the only law that was done away with is the law of animal sacrifice okay the law of animal sacrifice that was done away with in Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai became the supreme animal sacrifice okay there was no animal that could top Yahweh Shai's sacrifice there was no animal sacrifice that could top Yahweh Shai's sacrifice of himself on the cross that's why he was known one of his titles was the Lamb of God and we get that from, uh, I believe it was John the Baptist who called him the Lamb of God. As a matter of fact, let's start with that scripture. Then we're going to go into the reason why we had to sacrifice animals to begin with. That was a covenant that the Heavenly Father gave us to uh, abolish our sins. Transgression of the law. We had to sacrifice, depending on what law we transgressed, we had to sacrifice uh, you know, an animal sacrifice to abolish that sin. But it got to the point where our nation ran those sacrifices into the ground through hypocrisy. So the Heavenly Father said, away with your sacrifices. So there had to be a supreme sacrifice for the Heavenly Father to take us back as his chosen people. And that's where Yahweh Shai came in. He gave the supreme sacrifice when he sacrificed himself. Okay? Here's a man without no sin. Here's a man who was perfect and he sacrificed himself for sin. Okay. So uh, let's get uh, the book of, uh, what is that, John? I think it was, let me see. I know it's somewhere in John. It is right here. This is it. Yeah, this is it. The book of John 1 and 29. So yeah, it was John the Baptist who's, who called our Lord the Lamb of God. Let's start the 26th verse. John 1 and 26. John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who cometh, he it is, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me. And he's talking about Yahweh Shai. Whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, or Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. See? 
uh, the 29th verse, the next day, John seeth Yahweh coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. What world? The world of Israel. Israel is a world in itself. It ain't talking about the whole world. Because if you go into Greek word there, for world, you'll see the word cosmos. Okay. There it is, cosmos. Which means a certain society, a certain world. Now, Israel itself is a world in itself. How did we prove this? Isaiah 45 and 17. Furthermore, the scriptures tell us there are many worlds. But let's first read Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, meaning the Israelites. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. So the world of the Israelites. Now I said there are many worlds. Let's prove that. Hebrews. Because it's all about proving, man. As it is written, prove all things. So it's all about proving in the scriptures what you say. Hebrews 1 and 1. God, which is mo which his name is Yahweh. The most High's name is Yahweh. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, the worlds. So there are many worlds. So when you say John 3.16, for God so loved the world, many people think it's talking about the whole world. No, it's not. It's talking about the world of Israel. Because again, if you go into the Greek for John 3.16, let's go there real quick. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he ate, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, that's the scripture that the, that the wacky-tacky Christian with no understanding takes and runs with. See, God loves the whole world. First of all, it didn't say the whole world. It said, for God so loved the world. But the question is, what world? Since there are many worlds, what world did God love? The world of the Israelites. Those are his chosen people. And again, if you go into Greek, you'll see the word there for world is cosmos. Once again, a certain world, a certain society. Now, usually the Greek word there for the whole world is oikomene, oikomene. You got to know your Greek, man. Okay. But many of these wacky tacky Christians, they don't know. They're, they're willingly ignorant, like the scripture says. All right. In the book of Romans. All right, so we're on off track a little bit. Let's get back on track. John, the first chapter again, the 29th verse. Yahweh was called the Lamb of God. All right, the Lamb of God. Uh, John 1 and 29, the next day, John see if Yahweh coming unto him and say and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Right, because... That agreement, that covenant of taking away sin with animal sacrifice was given to the nation of Israel. Let's quickly go to Exodus 24 and 5. Matter of fact, I'll start the fourth verse, Exodus 24 and 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings. That was a, an agreement the Heavenly Father made with us, us Israelites. If we sinned, to abolish that sin, we had to perform a certain sacrifice, a certain animal sacrifice to abolish the sin. All right? And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings 
and sacrifice peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. See? Sacrifice peace offerings to make peace between us and the Lord for some infraction or for some transgression we committed against the law, against the Heavenly Father's law, there had to be a sacrifice, depending on what the infraction was. So it got to a point where, through hypocrisy, the nation of Israel ran the sacrificial agreement into the ground through hypocrisy. So the Heavenly Father got upset and he said, you know what? The hell with your sacrifices. I don't want any more of your sacrifices. If we go in the book of Isaiah, the first chapter, beginning at the uh, the uh, ninth verse, this this is where the Heavenly Father is cursing out the nation of Israel. You know what? We're going to bounce around. Isaiah 1 and um, let's start the second verse. Here O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord have spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. What children is he, talk is he talking about? The Israelites. And they have rebelled against me. See? The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel, see, it's all about the Israelites. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider, our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. A seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. <laughs> and, still, and the majority of them are, are, are that way to this very day. Okay, that's why the Heavenly Father is getting ready to bring a major destruction, man. All right, um, so. That was the fourth verse, right? So jumping down now, let's get to the point. Uh, jumping down now to the 11th verse. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? See, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats see when ye come to appear before me who have required this at your hand to tread my courts bring no more vain oblations incense is an abomination unto me the new moons and sabbaths the calling of assemblies i cannot away with it is iniquity even the solemn meeting. So pretty much it got to a point where the Heavenly Father was just fed up with the Israelites and their hypocrisy and iniquity. Okay? So they had to be, I think there's one more, Amos 5 and 25. There had to be a supreme sacrifice to be made for this nation. All right? Uh, Amos 5 and 25, is it? Yeah, Amos 5 and, and 22 is another example of what we just read in Isaiah. Amos 5 and 22. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Let me read that again. This is, this is plain. Amos 5 and 22. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings... That's the different sacrifices, such as the lambs, the he goats, etc., the oxen. I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. Like I said, we, we became a, a nation of, of hypocrisy and iniquity, all right? All right, uh, jumping down to the 25th verse. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? See? So the point is, this sets the stage now for a supreme sacrifice. And that's what our Lord did. Okay, now if we go in the book of um, Hebrews, this is why we don't sacrifice animal sacrifices anymore. Okay, Hebrews... Uh, 
uh, let me see start the seventh chapter I know there's one definitely in Hebrews the ninth chapter we're definitely going to go there Uh, Hebrews the seventh chapter. I'll start the twenty-sixth verse. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled. Now this is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. Let me read that again. Hebrews 7 and 26. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. See, animal sacrifice, incense, stuff like that, for the nation because of their wickedness. First for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. You see? You see? So that's why we, that's one of the reasons why we do not do animal sacrifices anymore. At least those of us that know the truth. <laughs> you still got certain Israelites think animal sacrifices is still a requirement by the Heavenly Father. Even though I just gave you a couple of examples in the Old, Old Testament where the Heavenly Father said, away with your animal sacrifices. Nevertheless, just you got guys who just don't get the truth, man. The truth ain't for everybody anyway. Now, I want to get to the part. These are the words of the Apostle Paul, by the way. He's speaking to the Israelites in Italy. Hence the title of the book, Hebrews. And he, he explains why. We do not do uh, animal sacrifices anymore. Okay, now I know for a fact it's in the ninth chapter of Hebrews. Okay, let's start at the uh, let's start at the the um, ninth verse, the book of Hebrews nine and nine, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the sacrifice perfect, as pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation reformation or reformation reformation which is what Yahweh brought he brought the reformation of the priesthood all right Yahweh brought the reformation of the priesthood and Yahweh Shai wasn't even a Levite. Yahweh Shai was a Judite. Okay? But Yahweh Shai being come an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. See? Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves which is a young cow, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. See, so that's why we don't need the blood of goats and calves and bulls and lambs, all right, anymore. Yahweh Shai took the place of that when he sacrificed himself. There is no greater. How can you top... How can an animal, a mere animal, top the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai? Come on, man. 
Neither by, you see how important this, the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai was, sacrificing his own self on that cross? It was immensely important, man. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal. No other animal sacrifice could bring that. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh and at one time that was the requirement how much more shall the blood of Yahweh Shai who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot meaning without sin to the heavenly father Yahweh purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. So that is why we do not do animal sacrifices anymore. Yahweh Shai have purged us. All right? Yahweh Shai have purged us through his sacrifice of himself on the cross. And that starts with those that believe in Yahweh Shai, which is the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. It starts with them, which we hope were part of that. That's why we call ourselves the hopeful elect. So if you still believe in animal sacrifices, and that means you're not of Yahweh Shai. You don't believe that his sacrifice have purged you, right, from the dead works, from the sins. You don't believe. But the elect believe, so we don't need animal sacrifices anymore. Let me read that again, Hebrews 9 and 14. How much more shall the blood of Yahweh Shai, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, without spot to Yahweh, that's the Father Yahweh, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. There you go. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. So now you know what the New Testament is all about. The New Testament is about Yahweh Shai taking place of animal sacrifice. All right, let me say that again. The New Testament is Yahweh Shai taking place of the animal sacrifices that was needed to purge the nation of Israel. All right, Yahweh Shai became the supreme animal sacrifice that purged the nation of Israel. Because we're all animals, all right? The word animal just means, is from the Latin animea, which means life, movement. All right, like when someone is animated, that means that person is, is real hyper, okay? So animal just means life. Animea means life. Okay? So we're all animals. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. And, and how were those transgressions resolved? Through animal sacrifice. But it got to the point, I just gave you a couple of examples, in the scriptures in, in the Old Testament, it got to a point where Israel became so wicked, filled with hypocrisy and iniquity, that the Heavenly Father said, man, I don't even want your sacrifices anymore. The hell with your sacrifices. So they had to have a supreme sacrifice, and that's where Yahweh Shai stepped in. And we're reading it here, Hebrews 9 and 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called, ah, they which are called, that's the elect, the hopeful elect, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So it's not for everybody. So once again, if some guy still believes in animal sacrifice after hearing all this truth, then that means you're not of Yahweh Shai. You, you don't belong to him. That's why you still believe in animal sacrifice. Okay, you still have Israelites talking about uh, animal sacrifice is still uh, required. No, it's not. Yahweh Shai covered our sins, man. All right. Oh, check this out. If you go down to Hebrews 9, the whole chapter is good. 
you should read the whole chapter of Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter, Hebrews 9 and 24, for Yahweh Shai is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven himself, heaven himself, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of of Yahweh for us, yeah, no other, <laughs> no other animal sacrifice could do that. Here we have a living priest, right, who lives forever, sitting at the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for us, as it is written. You know, the, the, where the Apostle Paul speaks about the Spirit making intercession for us. That's Yahweh Shai, and he's sitting at the right hand side of the Father, man, sitting, standing. Some scriptures say sitting, some scriptures say standing. Right? <laughs> no other animal sacrifice could cover that, man. Okay? So, so we have a living sacrifice. Yahweh, um, Hebrews 9 and 24. For Yahweh Shai is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven it itself, now to appear in the presence of Yahweh for us, for us, us, the hopeful elect, that is. Not, uh, not, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. There you go. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Right. But now once in the end of the world, and this is why we say that Yahweh Shai represented the end of Esau's kingdom that started more than 2000 years ago. So check that out. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. See, once again, this is why we do not do animal sacrifices. We don't have to. Let's read that again. Oh, that was powerful. Hebrews 9 and 26 for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. By now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. By the sacrifice of himself. See? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Right? And a lot of people don't even understand that scripture. So Yahweh Shai was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto the many who? Many Israelites. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Yeah, unto them that look for him. Who's that? The elect. And we, we truly know what we are looking for, man. The wacky tacky Christian has no idea. They, they, they talk about, yeah, Jesus is returned. They, first of all, they don't know what he looks like. They don't know his true name. They don't know even they, they don't even know why he went on the cross, what that was all about. All right? They're just, they're just filled with ignorance. But guess what? The hopeful elect, the true elect of Yahweh Bashim Shai, we know. We know. Okay? And we know what we're looking for, you know? Oh, yes, we do. We know what we're looking for. And we're patiently waiting, man. Patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai to come and press that reset button, man. Put an end to this fucking nightmare that we're in. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Okay, hopefully you got it. If you got it, you got it, senior Hebrew. If you didn't, well, I don't know what to tell you. You know, the scriptures made it plain why we don't offer animal sacrifices anymore. Now, if you did get it, drop a line in the comment section. Let me know. Is it yay or nay? Okay, so with that, on to the next one.